Hello, this is Will Faber from Art to Ride, and today we're looking at another submission by our good friend from Australia, Angie and her horse, Dante. She's been working with us for uh, a few months now as one of our scholarship students, and we've been seeing some great improvement in her horse. Already, this is a really nice walk, better than what I've seen before. Uh, he's stretching into the contact better, and the, beat, the walk is more four beat, which is what we want it to be. And really quite quite swinging uh, compared to what I saw the horse the first time. He kind of had those kind of legs that kind of looked like he was pulling them up out of mud. But this is starting to swing much more nicely. And she goes into a trot here. There's there's no big interruption of his frame particularly. Um, she didn't try to hold him into a frame, which I love. This is the biggest mistake people make. Is you can't <laughs> you'll never correct transitions by holding on to the front end of the horse. All you'll do is destroy the transition and slow the horse down. Unfortunately, many people think that is balance, but going slow is not balance. Uh, very quickly, they find out as soon as the horse actually starts moving that it isn't in balance at all. Which brings up the point of why we want to do this. Um, she was talking about her footing here. Now it's winter where she is there, and she doesn't have a ring to ride in. She's riding in this pasture. You know, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And one of the points of uh, training horses correctly is so that they can go over different kinds of ground. Uh, and be balanced just like a car you know and we have the back up it has its shock, its shock absorber system on it and it's also balanced through all four legs when a horse is on its forehand and once again it doesn't matter how high the horse's head and, head and neck is or how high the horse steps it can be on the forehand if its back is hollow which is the biggest mistake people make is they see horses with flashy front leg, leg movements with high knee action, very similar to a saddlebred or Tennessee walker, same thing, and they think these horses are not on the forehand just because their head and neck is way up in the air. But it's the back that depends on whether the horse is on the forehand or not, whether it's connected. In other words, the degree to weight the horse takes on the back end. But once again, this is looking really good compared to when I saw this horse before. It's really swinging beautifully over its back now. It's got a little more forward swing in it, even starting to show a little more thrust off the ground when I saw her the first time. Uh, one of the things that I noticed right away is the horse's belly pulled up right away, which tells me it's pull, pulling up into its back. The hocks are keeping a very good circular action in the back. It could have a little more swing. I feel like you could actually push him out just into a little bigger frame if you wanted to there a little bit. But, you know, on the other hand, it's not a bad idea to be conservative, you know, when you're on this type of ground, which once again, you know, you always want, you, you know, why a horse should be able to train on just about any kind of ground, as long as it's not just a bunch of holes. Um, as long as you're careful. Once again, as long as the horse is balanced on all four legs, for instance, uh, you know, many times galloping cross country, I've had horses step in holes, and if they're balanced, they just kind of skip right over the holes. But you can imagine if a horse is galloping on its forehand, if it hits a hole, which I've also seen many times, is the horses just come right down on top of people or flip over on them, which is even worse, the worst thing you can ever have happen. So getting the horse balanced is, is, uh, is what we want in all types of terrain. It's like an all-terrain vehicle, you know what I mean? Uh, which this horse is doing beautifully. She's riding it appropriately for the footing that she's in here. Now, you wouldn't want to do a, you know, a lot of big extensions and that sort of thing when you're on footing that you don't trust as much. You know, but as long as you keep an eye out, you know, a rider who's riding cross country has to be a good scout, so to speak. You know, you've got to keep your eyes on the ground, you know, so there's more to do in the sense that you must be, you know, focused on where you are going and help the horse out that way that you don't steer him right into a hole or into a tree or whatever the case may be. And believe me, I've seen people do all of the above. Um, so this looks really good, swinging and active. He's getting a little bit lower there, getting his top line a little more engaged. But look how rhythmic and nice it is, you know, and look how... Um, just relaxed and happy the horse is. There's nothing interfering with his stride, so he's happy to go along doing what she's asking him to do. She's putting him in, into a frame that makes his job more comfortable than it would be if he were not going over his back in the way he is here. So this is really wonderful improvement that I see here and really well done. You know, and once again, on this footing, he looks really, really good, and, uh, and that's perfectly fine. Just be a little uh, conservative. But once again, look how nicely he's pulled up through his ab muscles already, and that only took a few moments, where in the first video that I saw of this horse, um, you know, he looked quite distended in his flanks there, which tells me he was not working up to his back. But compared to what I see now, go back and once again, I uh, tell everybody, please go back and compare these videos, because that's what I want you all to see, is how you can develop your horses and how they develop over time. That's the biggest thing that I see most people have no concept of. You know, we grow up in... Uh, you know, we've sort of, unfortunately, because we lost so many, you know, after World War II, we lost so many great riders and the horse business didn't come back. We lost a couple of generations. And that's really what happened to the horse business in the horse world is that, you know, we lost a couple of generations of riders that it took for the horse to come back after World War II. 
And, uh, you know, so we sort of got into this thing, what I call rent string mentality, you know, whoever was the best kid at getting on and beating up the horses, you know, got to jump on and straighten them out for the other people. So a lot of people learn this kind of, you know, make the horse do it kind of thing. You know, the horse is a big, strong animal. It should just be able to do this. But, you know, the reality is they may be big and they may be strong, but, you know, most of them have pretty bad, weak backs that certainly need to be developed, even the best of them to a great deal before they have a lot of weight put on them. So what you're doing here in the rising trot is wonderful. Um, I would suggest him he's going well enough now that uh, you could start doing a little sitting trot with him. I'd like to see that in the next video I see of you. Um, watch the videos on developing the sitting trot. I would just like to see him on a circle, nice relaxed rein, and just sitting three strides at a time. So once again, when you are able to do sitting trot, you should be able to do it without any interruption of the horse's stride. It should not change the horse from its working trot. So if you see yourself having to slow the horse way down because it's so jarring when you sit, that's telling you that the shock absorbers simply aren't there. So don't sit. Don't be like so many people who endlessly destroy themselves and their horses by thinking that sitting trot is what dressage is all about. Nothing could be further from the truth. Dressage is all about developing horses over their top line correctly in a manner that is gymnastic and uh, relaxed and happy for both horse and rider. That's what dressage is. You know, it's not this idea of forcing them into frames. That was dressage, what dressage was not about. And it's very sad that we've seen it creep more and more into dressage where, you know, we are seeing... <laughs> You know, we shouldn't be having an argument about the cruelty of dressage practices. I'm amazed that this has ever come up, but, you know, it is because this is how far, you know, we went down the wrong road for a while. But it's lovely to see so many people now, you know, getting their own horses together and, you know, realizing that they can do this on their own, you know, just like Angie is doing here. What a wonderful shoulder in that is. He's got his nose a little bit times pulled up to the left a little too much, but that's not bad at all. I love how you didn't overbend the neck. Everyone remember that when we talk about bend in the horse, we're talking about the middle of the horse's back, not in the neck. Whenever you see people twisting horses' necks from side to side, thinking they're softening them, all that really does is shorten the horse's stride down. And while that may work to some degree to, and to people who don't know what they're looking at on big flashy moving horses, you know, if you do that to a horse that isn't a big flashy mover, you'll, you'll find that you'll have destroyed so much movement, there will be nothing there at all. But once again, once you have an educated eye, you'll be able to see these things on, you know, uh, expensive horses as well as the less expensive ones. But this is really a nice walk. I nice how he's softening there. His, his working walk is just developing beautifully from which you can explain things to him. Once again, that was what Nuno Oliveira used to say. He used to say that walk was where we explain everything to the horse. Where we have time to take it slowly. You know, it's like learning to play an instrument. You don't, you don't go at it as 100 beats per minute, you know, right off the bat. You go slowly, slowly, slowly slowly as you train yourself and your body. Well, the same is true of, of a horse. You know, it must train very slowly so it can understand. Then it's just that simple principle. We put everything in order. We work the shoulder into the leg yields in the walk. And then when we can do them and keep the horse over its back in the walk, we're probably ready to begin those same things at the trot. You know, and then into the canter, all things. So we take them, the gears in the order, you know, that they come, one, two, three, so to speak, walk, trot, and canter. Um, and we develop uh, the exercises starting at the walk and then all the way through to the canter. And that's really about as simple as it is. And if you stick to that plan, it simplifies your whole, you know, how do I organize my riding plan? Well, that's how you do it. You know, the order of the exercises is always the same every day, not where you do them, okay? And now, of course, there may be days when we leave out once the horses get to a higher level. There's certainly plenty of days when we, when we leave things out and where we only do nothing but stretch days, which we certainly have, which you should have be conscious of and uh, have any time you feel your horse beginning to get tight on you over a few days of work, you may just go back and have a stretching day. But once again, these shoulder ends look really good, Angie. I couldn't be happier with this. He's bending over the whole length of his body absolutely beautifully. You're in a good position there. I don't see anything. I love how you come to the end of the shoulder end and you give the horse a stretch. He could walk out a little more actively after that, but I see you trying to do that. And that's exactly what you want to do, people. You know, you don't want to just come out and hold the horse in a frame for an entire workout, just like you and I. You don't go to the gym and do one exercise over and over again until you're so exhausted you can't, you know, stand up or move your arms. You know, you have to keep back and come back and letting the blood flow. Well, the horse has the same way, you know. If we keep the muscles contracted, there is no blood flow through the muscles. So it's only when we let the muscles back out again that we get that flow of blood back th through the muscles and we build muscle. So once again, this is a really good looking shoulder in. I really like how you're doing that. Bordering on a little bit too much bend in the neck right there, but there you go. You straighten it out really good. You get the idea. No more bend in the neck than in the middle of the back. 
Now, this is really good, and this has been you know, a wonderful example of uh, how you can do it at home all by yourself if you're willing to take the time and, and, uh, and go through the steps in the right order. There's really nothing hard about training horses. The only thing about hard about training horses is, is training yourself, that is training yourself to be patient, training your eyes to watch and be able to see what, what is really going on, and to train your level of, of uh, feel and your level of instinct and your compassion for the animal. That's what has to grow in time over this because if you can become less compassionate as we see so many people who are ready to strike these animals that you know at, at you know the, the slightest little shake of the head or you know they put the saddle on and you know beat that horse up because he's trying to kick at you for putting the saddle on well if the horse starts to kick at you and you put the saddle on check and see if his back is sore because it probably is rather than beat the horse up and you'll have a much more happy camper so to speak but this is beautiful look how he's stretching down now in the trot and there's been so little difference in the trot it's really good i think you could open it up just a little more but once again on the kind of footing that you're on here you don't want to open it up too much and you wouldn't want to do too many extensions so there's nothing wrong with doing some length in the stride as long as you're sure that you know the grass is steady and you've got no big holes there anywhere but this is really, really good and a huge improvement. And this is what I call a really nice working trot. I mean, you know, for a horse that would be like a training level horse. This is what a training level horse should look like. It's accepting contact with the bit. It's working over its back. And look how he's starting to thrust. Now, right there, that's really beautiful. He's actually starting to thrust. He comes a little deeper. And you're riding the horse beautifully from behind to the front. That's really, really well done. Really, really nice and really good in the leg yield once again. Very good there. No change of rhythm. That's what I want to see. And once again, she comes back to a little more of a stretch after the harder exercise. Beautiful. Just what I want to see. And look how nicely he changes the rhythm through the working. That tells you a lot when you can change the direction without the horse throwing its head up in the air. It tells you that you have developed the back to a great degree. A great degree. Angie, so this has been a wonderful tape, wonderful improvement. I look forward to seeing the next one. Next time I want you to add a little sitting trot. Once again, just watch my video on that. Just add a few strides at a time. Three, when you can do three on a circle, then do five. In other words, alternate. All, uh, in other words, three, then alternate five. Five strides rising, five strides sitting. And when you can keep that, then you can go on to half a circle, that sort of thing. So you can add a little bit of that into your training as long as it doesn't interrupt the horse's stride. And uh, once again, maybe in the next tape we can take a look at the canter because the trot work is coming absolutely beautiful. I mean, if you rode a training level dressage test like this, the way you're doing it right here, you should score very, very high and do very, very well. Because that's what a training level horse is supposed to look like right there. It's accepting contact. It's working over its back. It's swinging freely. That looks like it would develop into something really beautiful. And you're doing a wonderful job with it. Really sensitive with your hands and uh, absolutely no problem. But you see how easy it is to ride when we train them correctly. Once again, this is Will Faber from Art to Ride with my good friend Angie and her horse Dante. See you next time.